Episode 141. No milk today. As Lucius said this, he clenched his fists, and the green veins on his forehead twitched. However, he still couldn't hold back and added, Wait till tomorrow to call back the guards. Let him be greedy for one more day, just one more. He had snatched away something that belonged to Roger, and he'd definitely make it up to him in the future. What? Miles looked at Lucius in a daze, not too willing to do so. Weren't things pretty good right now? Lucius threw a cold glance at him, and Miles immediately said, I'll do as you say. Blair was awakened by the leopard cub stepping on her. She opened her eyes and felt that her body didn't feel right. She flipped up the animal skin covering her and realized that she was naked. The leopard cubs were stepping on her stomach, crying out. They were also a little stronger compared to when they were just born. Lucius heard the sounds and went up the tree carrying hot soup. You're awake. I've made meat soup. Have some. When the tall Lucius walked into the house, the light rays in the room immediately turned dim. Blair quickly covered up with the blanket, looking embarrassed and furious as she asked him, You? Why did you take off my clothes? A layer of blush rapidly appeared on Lucius's handsome tanned face, his gaze flickering. I wiped down your body for you earlier. Your clothes were covered in sweat and I brought it out to wash. I saw that you were deep asleep and couldn't bear to move you. Blair lowered her head and looked at the shape of her body under the blanket, her mind in a daze. Didn't that mean that he had seen her body? How can you be like this? You should have just woken me up, Blair said angrily, but her helpless tone made her sound a little weaker, appearing more fragile. There was a pang in Lucius's heart as if needles had pierced it. However, he didn't back off and said in an unyielding tone, I'm actually the same as Roger. I saved you from Stephen and brought you back to the City of Beastmen. I too have the right to become your mate. Lucius hadn't thought of using this compulsory regulation to become Blair's mate. He was only planning to pursue her as an ordinary beast man would. However, after he lured the behemoth away, he came back to discover that Blair had accepted Stephen. That had utterly destroyed his delusions. He snatched Blair from Stephen's hands. There was no way Stephen would be able to accept him being Blair's mate. Their few contacts later on also proved that Stephen wanted to kill him. Not being a match for Stephen, he could only choose to hide. Are you trying to dig up old bones? Blair looked at him in disbelief. Lucius panicked and anxiously squatted next to her, explaining, No, I never thought of forcing you. Don't reject me. Seeing how anxious he was, Blair's heart softened. She gripped tightly onto the blanket and said, I'll forget it this time around. There won't be a next time. Lucius felt relieved as if a great burden in his heart had been unloaded. Help me bring my clothes over. Blair didn't look at him. She still found this a little unbelievable. Damn. Her body was seen just like that. Moreover, it was when she had just given birth and her body was in such a bad state. Blair really felt like digging a hole and burying herself in it. Howl! An exceptional loud cry suddenly rang out from the blankets. It wasn't loud, but it sounded as if the one crying out was going hoarse. Blair thought that something had happened to the leopard cubs. She quickly put out her hand to touch them and coincidentally touched one of their mouths. The cub sucked her fingertip. That bright cry stopped, and the warm little mouth kept on sucking away at her finger. Blair's body stiffened up. This time around, the babies were starving. Lucius brought her clothes over and asked, Do you have energy? Do you want me to help you wear your clothes, or do you want to do it yourself? Blair's lips twitched, and she said awkwardly, Leave it. The babies are hungry. Okay. Lucius didn't seem to feel any shame about this at all and continued to wear a normal expression. Then quickly feed them, and I'll feed you. As Lucius said this, he picked up the meat soup at the side. 
Blair quickly shook her head, pulling up the blankets. Don't come over. Don't look at me. Lucius put the soup at the side and listened to her, turning away. All right. Don't just take care of the children. Remember to drink the soup. Blair heaved a sigh of relief, turning her body so that her back was facing outward while the leopard cubs were all on the inside. The leopard cubs kept on howling away, rubbing against Blair's body as they did. Blair fed two of them while stroking the remaining one. The leopard cubs were all dried now, and she couldn't tell if their fur was dirty or not. It felt quite smooth. The third leopard cub cried pitifully. His voice was weaker. It seemed that he was the weaker one out of the three. It wasn't by chance that he had become the one that was left out. His body was weak and he didn't have a strong sense of existence to begin with. Blair said softly, Baby, don't cry. It'll be your turn in a while. As she said this, she continued to keep an eye on the other two. She didn't feel anything. Did the babies manage to drink anything? Just as she was thinking this, one leopard cub knocked against her body, causing her to feel pained. Blair frowned and was planning to bear with it. However, this leopard cub released his mouth, crying out even more pitifully than the cub that had been left out. Then the other cub also let go and cried out. What's the matter? Lucius heard sounds and turned his head a little. Blair quickly said, It's nothing. Don't turn your head over. Lucius didn't say anything and sat by the door quietly. Blair felt stumped as she looked at the leopard cubs, then at her chest. A few times when she woke up, milk would leak out. Why was it that none was coming out when she needed it? Blair let the third leopard cub give it a go as well, but there was still no milk. Hearing the leopard cub's pitiful cries, Blair's heart ached for them, and she started squeezing with her hands. It had been two months since she last trimmed her nails, and they had gotten very long. She didn't manage to squeeze out milk, but scratched her skin instead, causing her to feel some pain. How should she do it? Blair couldn't help but extend her neck and personally use her mouth to help them. Blair? Lucius's voice rang out again, sounding worried. The cubs are crying out badly. What's the matter? Is there not enough milk? It wasn't just not enough. There was none at all. Blair wore a bitter expression and said, I have no idea what's going on either. They aren't able to get any milk. Lucius's countenance changed and he quickly got up, walking over. It must be because you've eaten too little. Quickly have some soup. Lucius blamed himself. He hadn't taken good care of Blair, causing her not to have any milk to feed the cubs. Blair felt that what Lucius said made sense. She picked up the bowl and drank it all in one gulp. The soup was of the right temperature, and she felt very comfortable from drinking it. After having some food, Blair felt that she had a lot more energy now. Maybe there'd be milk now. Holding on to hope, Blair specially picked out a cub that looked slightly more lively and active and let him give it a try. In the end, there was still nothing. If they were in her world, she could still ask a doctor or check online to get more information. However, in this place, she had no one to turn to. Moreover, she was in the Peacock Village. Even if there were experienced old females, they might not know how to resolve this either. Blair was on the verge of crying. The children she had with Roger wouldn't starve to death, right? Lucius, why don't you go ask the females in the tribe? It'd be good if anyone knows about this. Blair looked toward Lucius with her eyes filled with hope. Lucius patted her, his heart aching for her, and he said as if he was giving an oath, I won't let your children starve to death. Be good and stay home. I'll be back very soon. Lucius's assurance let Blair feel a lot more at ease. The leopard cubs were hungry and kept on crying, so she cradled them, humming simple nursery rhymes. It didn't take long before Lucius came back. As expected, no one knew about breastfeeding. The atmosphere in the room turned bad. 
Lucius went down the tree. When he came back up, he was holding onto a mud ball. He covered it up with leaves and cracked it open. An intense meat fragrance was emitted. I secretly watched you make this in the past and gave it a try today. I didn't expect it to be quite successful. Give it a try. Lucius put the meat in the bowl and handed it to her. Blair had put on her dress. She scratched her head and appeared impatient. How can I possibly have the appetite to eat? You have to eat, even if it's for the children. Lucius sat down next to Blair, tearing off a piece of meat and feeding her. Be good. Blair threw a glance at him and opened her mouth to take the meat, chewing on it as if she was chewing on wax. Seeing that Lucius was planning on continuing to feed her in this manner, Blair quickly placed the children on her lap and snatched the bowl from him. I'll do it myself, Lucius said encouragingly. Eat more. You might just get milk in a while. Blair gave a non-committed reply. The situation was too bad, and she was in no mood to care if this topic was embarrassing or not. The cubs were tired from the crying and dozed off again. Blair was afraid that they'd die from hunger and didn't dare to sleep this time around. Every once in a while, she'd squeeze her breasts. The strange thing was that even though her breasts felt unbearably bloated, her skin was all tensed up tightly. She wasn't able to squeeze out any milk. Could it be that... were her pores too fine? At this thought, Blair found an excuse to get Lucius to leave, then took a look at her chest. As expected, her skin was very smooth, with almost no pores to be seen. How could milk come out easily? A realization struck Blair. It'd probably take a hard suck to clear them. People often used the saying that they had exerted the strength it took for them to suck out milk to show that they had already done their best. That showed that it would require quite significant force. Blair shook a leopard cub awake and said softly, Baby, come. Try again. Meow. Meow. The cub's eyes hadn't opened, but when his mouth came into contact with something, he instinctively opened his mouth and bit onto it. Blair cheered in her heart for him, feeling uneasy. Suddenly, Lucius, who had left, came back. He had brought along the purple balls that Blair had wanted to eat. He stood outside the door and his gaze went into a daze for a moment. He then held on to his breath. After not being able to drink anything after very long, the cub opened its mouth and cried out loudly baring his bare gums as well as his pink and tender tongue. His eyes had moistened up. It seemed that he was crying. Blair felt horrible as if she had been punched. She didn't care about tidying her clothes and quickly cradled him. Don't cry, don't cry. Baby, be good. There'll be food in a while. <laughs> 